So this is going to be a tutorial focused on Inner Reflections workflow, which is a vid to vid workflow that's powered by ControlNet. This is going to be awesome. I really do hope that you can follow along because I'm telling you, if you get this up and running, you're going to be doing some awesome stuff. I have my resources folder here as usual with my tutorials and I have two sections, a video folder that has my input video and a workflow file. This workflow file again is by Inner Reflections, but we are going to be making some tweaks to it. Now we're missing some items here, so we're going to make sure that we install them. That's going to be right here. So as usual, we click our manager, install missing nodes, and it's going to give us our two sections here. So we install, we install, and to apply, we make sure we restart Comfy UI. So to restart, we're just going to go inside of our command line. We're going to control C and you see it says stop server and we're just going to run it again by doing Python main.py. Note, there's a lot of things that it's going to have to download. So just give it its time and be patient. All right. So once all that is installed, we're just going to refresh our web page and you'll note that we are no longer missing our nodes. So this is a much larger node network than what we're casually used to with the tutorial series, but just follow along. Everything's pretty straightforward from what we were doing before. The only difference for the most part is this added in control net section. Now this control net section works pretty simple. So you have the actual control net that, uh, section that's applying the control net. This is where we load our model into the control net, which in this case is the line art model. We're not going to be manipulating it. We're just going to be getting our feet wet. And we have right here a preprocessor. The preprocessor is what actually changes the input images into the, the format that they need to be to make our control net work properly. So right now we have a realistic line art preprocessor. Again, we're not going to mess around with things too much. We'll do that in other tutorials. Here we have an upscaler that changes the size of our image to whatever the size, width, and height we have in this section. But we're going to have to change a node. So I want you guys to follow along closely and don't get too nervous. It's pretty simple. Here we have a load images node. I imagine a lot of you are going to get caught up on how do you turn a video into frames. So I wanted to show you guys that there's actually a load video node, as you see there. So VHS underscore load video. And this will allow us to do the same thing this node is doing, but it's going to automatically convert our video to frames. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to drag the image into my image uh, input here on the upscale image. Now, all we have to do is choose our file to load, which I'm going to click on my input video. There's another thing that I would like to change. And that's because if we look at my video, I am in fact a male. So because of that, I want to change our pretext. Our pretext is our head prompt. So in other words, if the pretext says masterpiece best quality, it's going to be masterpiece best quality spring day cherry blossoms. Then it's going to be masterpiece best quality summer day vegetation, etc, etc. But it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here. As you can see, it's getting cut off. So what we can do is we can copy all of it, cut it out. And I'm going to right click on pretext or rather just in the node in general. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says convert pretext to input. I'm going to click that and notice that now we have pretext up here and the section is gone. I'm going to drag off of the pretext and I have TTN text here, but we could also search text. And as you see, it pops up there. So I'm going to click. And now we have a text box on the side where we can put our pretext in. It's a lot more clear. It makes things more visually appealing too when you're working on it. Trust me. So the reason why I wanted to get into this is because I am not a girl. I am a guy. So we want to fix that so we don't get too much fluctuations in our animation, too much flickering and whatnot. So I'm not changing the prompt. I'm literally doing a hello world in the programming world, which is just taking ground truth running it, ensuring that things are working properly. I'm going to use hello young for my model. So that's the low checkpoint node, as you know, from the other tutorials. 
and I'm just going to switch my VAE to berries mix because I don't have the other one. So I'm also going to have to change my animate diff to from temporal one to the model that I have. These are just things that you want to get in order just in case you have any errors. Just remember, switch your models because you're loading somebody else's file. So now the last thing we're going to need to do to get things up and running is we're going to have to download the associated control net. Now I recommend downloading all of them, but if you're limited on storage space or you know that you just want to use this one, download what you need, you know. So we're going to head to this page. It's a hugging face space. I believe you'll need to create an account so that you can actually download the models, but I'm not sure. I'm not for sure on that. Um, the ones that we'll be using or the one that we'll be using, as you can see here, is the lineart.pth. So lineart.pth. We want to click that, this little button here that lets us uh, download the file. And we want to put that in Comfy UI, in models inside control net so we're going to save and we also want to download the yaml file associated with the actual control net that we're going to use in this case the line art yaml and same exact directory so we'll just give that a minute to download and then we'll get up and running all right so our model finished downloading as usual we want to refresh our page so that comfy ui becomes aware of whatever models we put in. So we see that now it pops up there. The next thing we want to do is, as you see, we are generating 120 frames. Our video may be longer than that, so it would be a good idea to frame load cap to set that to 120 because that's telling it, hey, don't load more than 120 frames. Note you can skip frames, as in the first frames in the video, as well as select, you know, every second frame, every third frame, et cetera. But we're just gonna keep it, everything else on the base uh, settings. So I'm gonna click run. Notice our uh, frames have been extracted here from our video. And then the control net, it's passed to the control net and inside the control nets previews, we can see that it has turned the frames of the video into a line art-esque kind of style. Now it's going to use that to drive the animation output. So we're going to give it its time. It is going to take quite some time. So that's something to note in terms of VRAM with the preset settings, it should be around 12 gigabytes. So as you see, I'm, I'm capping out at 11.9. If that's too much, you can always lower the amount of VRAM usage by lowering your width and height here, but you're still probably going to be around eight to 12 gigabytes, I imagine. So yeah, we'll just let that run and see what we get. So let's take a look at our output here. I think this is awesome. This isn't even a uh, .mp4 or WebM. This is a GIF and it still looks this cool. The artifacts are from the fact that it's in GIF, but the cool thing about Comfy UI is that if we haven't changed anything and it was a fixed uh, seed for the generation. So if we switch this to .mp4, it's going to just generate from here. It's not gonna do everything else again. So as you can see, we are minimizing the artifacts in the video. We no longer have those weird striations in it. And I think this is pretty impressive. Uh, it's most definitely uh, following my face nicely. The eyes, I'm surprised it got the, the shape over my eyelids so uh, precisely. Before I end the video, just some quick parameters you wanna stay focused on in terms of experimentation. Obviously, your steps, your CFG, your sampler, and your um, your primitives, but also here, your strength for your control net. It's a big one right there. So the strength for your control net, the input size for your control net frames, and I would say that's about it. So that is a very fast run through on Inner Reflections work regarding control net, vid to vid, and animate diff. I literally just did a hello world, so this thing is capable of way more. This is me barely even testing it out, just getting it up and running, just because I wanted to show everybody how to do it. Stay experimenting. Please, if possible, follow Inner Reflections on Twitter and YouTube, show them some love, as well as, if possible, please tag me and I imagine them in any creations that you make. We love seeing the work that the community is making and, you know, stay creative. Blessings, guys.